Thank you very much for the kind introduction and thank you to be part of the Tech Tank uh, Conference 2022. My name is Markus Werner and I will present in the next couple of minutes the uh, so-called reprod, uh, what we mean a resource autogic production based on secondary semi-finished products. Uh, the presentation is divided in four parts. Uh, I will talk about the reproach uh, approach, the ideas behind, and uh, will also show the metallic uh, cycle and as well as the potential of the reproach approach. The second part is dedicated to the engineering and uh, processing of secondary semi-finished products into new parts. And you can see in the right part uh, how does the shortened cycle looks like. The third part of the presentation will be on the dialess sheet metal forming. It's another way to reduce the resources which are necessary to produce sheet metal parts and we call it Stabifu approach. And at the end I will conclude with an outlook and this will be the view in the future uh, to the Stabifu second generation. If you look around, uh, you may realize that we are still in a linear economy, even if everyone talks about a circular economy. And uh, the way is that we start normally with raw material, add some value to get material, then semi-finished products. And then normally it starts as a business of sheet metal forming, we shape components out of it, and there will be produced products out of it. And uh, unfortunately today, most of our products uh, end up uh, on disposal if you have a look on the whole economy. And uh, what is known is uh, product recycling if we make refurbish or retrofit of parts. And uh, when today it's talked about uh, someone uh, about material or recycling, then we mostly uh, speak about raw material recycling. And, um, on this graphic, you see there is a gap in the middle, it's white, and this is the area where we put our approach. And we hope that it's a more circular economy approach, and we want to like to close the loop uh, at the highest level of added value, which is possible if we want to change the geometry or the functionality of a component. That means we close the loop at this area from the product we take semi-finished product out of it and make the processing of the second life components to have a second life product. And as you can see, the amount of disposal is really less and uh, with the way we think uh, a, a, a circular economy can be grow up in this way. Uh, you have heard the presentation of Professor Albut and uh, maybe you have also realized that there was a uh, conference called Valmet, and uh, this was about the dilemma of growing demand on steel and aluminum, and on the other side, the carbon targets uh, 2010 to 2050. And uh, one of the results was a recommendation, what is here called uh, number one, reusing metal without melting. And this is the way Report uh, works. And here you see the complete. Uh, steel making route, which are, should be familiar to you. Uh, you start with arc and energy, amount of energy, and at the end you see a lot of losses, and this is a small amount what uh, uh, come into the product. And the report cycle started at the end of a product life, and we go back just before blanking. When stamping, we get the shape on the sheet metal part and or bulk metal part, and then again a product. So you see that is a shorter cycle, so that means we uh, save a lot of time, we make a more intensive recycling than ever, and we, of course, save all the losses which occurs in the primary and secondary steel route. To show it again, uh, the standard metal recycling loop looks like this. Graphics, we start at raw material, then it's melted uh, to materials, out of the materials, we make semi-finished products, components, and then it will be a product. Then we have a product life cycle, and at the end of the product life cycle, it ends mostly in the disposal. And here it will be shredded uh, if it's a metal, and then the raw material uh, is 
starting again the melting process. The rape rod would be look like this. This is a shortening of the standard metallic loop, and uh, we say it's also smarter to use semi finished, uh, secondary semi finished products instead of virgin materials because we can save the most energy uh, consuming and uh, also emitting processes. Um, to have some figures of it, you see it in this table. The energy consumption for one ton steel is about 22 gigajoule. Uh, if you're using the primary route, and therefore we also emit 1.7 tons of carbon dioxide. Uh, the secondary steel route where you use some scrap and you can lower the energy consumption uh, to 10 gigajoule per ton. Uh, this is a reduction of 65% and also the carbon dioxide emission can be reduced to 60 or with 62%. If you go to the rape rod, uh, we can even save more energy to get a part in the second life and also uh, a lot of uh, carbon dioxide emission regarding to primary steel route. This would be 84%, uh, but also to the secondary steel route with approximately 60%. So there is an, an option to reduce the energy consumption and also the carbon dioxide uh, emission as long as you have no green energy and an uh, affordable amount. This looks like uh, managing or marketing slides, and you might ask if it works. And I say yes, of course. I will show you some realized examples. And then the process design for the semi finished products made of secondary ones. And, uh, but there are also some challenges, and I will explain it in the next slides. Normally, if you do a research project about circular economy, you start with uh, design thinking and uh, designing uh, recycling products or design for recycling. We did choose another way. We did the hard way, maybe. Uh, we started at the scrapyard. We took off uh, some roofs of cars, trimmed them on the scrapyard. Some of the parts we cleaned to get the color out of it, and then uh, after the forming, the parts look like this. Even the color, if it's not prepared for a second or third life cycle, it's still on the part. We did a hydroforming process with this components to get a back panel and a seat panel of this beautiful chair. And uh, so we could come up with uh, some old parts out of a, or from the scrapyard to produce uh, a new product. And also the legs of this uh, chair are, could be done, uh, made by hydroforming. And uh, if you want, you can also use some tubular stuff from maybe a famous uh, Swedish company to make new products out of it. Here you see the route for uh, sheet metal parts, and it works also well for bulk metal parts. Here we choose a drive jet, cleaned them, uh, disassembled it, and then we made some high spring screws out of it with losing less than 5% of the material it was uh, in the drive shaft. And so we can change from the more or less blue market to uh, re regenerative uh, energy and what we call as a green market. So it works, uh, but there are still some difficulties and challenges. Here again, we start at the scrap rod. And if you want to engineer the process, uh, then you need some material data. And this is a challenging thing, the material characterization of secondary semi-finished products uh, to make all the simulation and what is necessary to bring uh, the engineering phase to a real part. And at the end, in this European founded project, we did uh, out of some um, roofs break covering panels, and I will show how we did it. The first route is simple we cut off some circular planks, formed them by deep drawing, and at the end, there was a final trimming to get the right contour. And uh, because we want to save process steps, 
we decided to make it in two steps. Uh, and therefore, we cut not a circular plank, we use a pre shaped plank out of the secondary semi finished products and then forming again. To start the video, so a colleague of mine placed the pre shaped plank into the die and the press is closing, makes a deep drawing, and after some seconds, you get the desired product out of it and it's ready to use in the core production. I have mentioned uh, that is uh, some challenges uh, within this process route and this is regarding the mechanical properties of the secondary semi-finished products are something like unknown. The initial strengths of the material yield and hardening curves as well as the forming limit curves are not available or not known. And uh, the same as to the geometric, uh, especially the wall thickness is not more equal like in virtual materials. And we divided the parts in for the sheet metal fraction uh, nearly in flat, single or double curved shapes. And what can we do to get the material data we need for simulation? We can use the standard procedure with a destructive tests like tensile tests and we are shown some Yakashima tests to get the forming limit diagram and curve. Uh, another option which is still uh, undergoing in research is to use or uh, to estimate uh, the loose of formability of the secondary semi-finished products by uh, estimating or comparing it with the uh, curvature of the product. And uh, this is also in first indice what kind of formability is lost in this uh, first life. Another option, and uh, we choose it too, is to make a re-engineering to imitate what happens uh, to the sheet metal in the first life, all the forming processes which uh, are used some formability or uh, reduce the formability. And uh, if you do so, you are come up with the idea to use digital twins and virtual shadows of the first life of the product. And uh, this would be also non-destructive. Uh, and what we think it's a really a second use and a additional use of all the data of the real process. And uh, at the moment, we say that's not available in this data, even if we are terabytes of single uh, digital twins and virtual shadows around. But for further processing of semi-finished products, it's still not available. But uh, this might be a good idea to have an exchange to discuss this, and maybe there's a good point for further cooperation. Uh, we have shown that uh, semi-finished products or secondary semi-finished products can be uh, changed into new products. And another way to uh, reduce uh, the resource this we need for production this is the third part of the presentation and uh, there are a free level strategy for more sustainable sheet metal parts. The first is uh, known as lightweight design is realizing topological optimized part geometries. That means there are not uh, additional reinforcements or something like this, just material where it's needed for functionality. The second level would be reduction of direct material usage uh, for the final product. And this means more or less the increase in the material usage. Uh, in the aerospace industry, it's called a uh, fly uh, by to fly ratio. And the, the more uh, interesting level is the third level, the reduction of indirect material resources for production equipment. And this means that we reduce the amount of energy and material is necessary to form uh, out of a sheet metal uh, component. And especially for forming dyes, we have de developed this uh, stabi approach and where we can save up to 90% of the material and also the cost for the forming dyes. And how do we do this? Uh, there are three uh, options. And uh, the first is that we reduce the forming stages, which are necessary to get especially such parts like a seed cross member to just a single drawing or crash forming stage. And this helps to significantly reduce the cost and time for fabrication of the dies. 
The second thing is that all secondary forming steps uh, are done uh, on a flexible or on a CNC sheet metal working system, like a true punch or a press break with flexible operation, which are also have some control loops. And the third part is to optimize save, uh, the resource efficiency by reducing the material and uh, energy, which is necessary to produce such parts. And uh, maybe you are familiar with such products and parts, and you would normally done it, do it in six to eight stages in a progressive die. And this is a new process sequence we call Stabi sequence. And here you see the, the stages for a cross, seed cross member made of DB600, 1.5 millimeter, originally done in six stage progressive die. And we have a blanking, uh, blank cutting stage when we have just one forming a stage which is really dedicated to a specific part geometry. We made it with crash forming and again a trimming if the natural uh, edge is not uh, good enough and at the end the depth of the 3D shape we get by free bending. And having just one dedicated uh, uh, tool we can save up to 90% of the tooling material compared to the conventional manufacturing. And here, this is a calculation table of it. And the economic benefit starts with the cost of the tooling. And if you do the flexible uh, Stabi free approach, then you see that there is not so much tooling, even if the process costs are higher, uh, up to a quantity of 30 to 50,000 parts a year. This technology and process sequence is even cheaper and from our side, even better. And here there are some other advantages, more technology, technological advantages. As uh, announced, 90% less uh, cost for the dye, when we could also increase the material usage uh, uh, and save 22% of the material. Uh, all the operations are done on controlled forming operation on CNC machineries. And uh, another advantage is that uh, the lead time from the idea to the final part uh, tr uh, shrinks from weeks to days. Because you, if you want to change something, you just change as a CNC uh, program. And therefore, it's really easy to change the part geometry. And at the end, we can summarize that it's really a cost-effective process for smaller production volumes, not for the high quantities, but for the smaller ones. And uh, I will give a short outlook because maybe you have realized that uh, the first generation of Stabi free parts have straight lines like this bending line. Uh, but if you want to have such flanges or curved parts, which are uh, more in a car, then uh, we have to use a second generation of the Stabi free approach. And uh, if you ask how many uh, tools or forming dies we use for these parts, then that's the results. If you ask if it's everything what you need, yes, it is. It's a die which is a, a mount on the robot as an end effector. Then we have here the rollers to make this beads into the uh, part, then uh, some dies to make the flange forming, and um, here are similar, uh, uh, represents the bending, and uh, how did we did this flange uh, is shown in this short video. Normally, if you to, uh, think about roll forming, you have in mind 20 to 30 stands of rollers, which are online and produces kilometers of uh, profiles. And we did it in another way. We put one movable uh, roller pair on the end effector on a robot and makes a movement to make the forming. And uh, it looks like this. And uh, after a couple of minutes, uh, it's ready. And if you want to have another geometry, you just have to change the robot program as well as the the cut before. 
Um, to close the summarize or to, to close the loop to the secondary semi finished products, if you use such uh, materials, then you might think that the material characteristic and the formability is changing. And with this process I have introduced here, we are able to do uh, a scanning of the, what happens within the process on one path, can compare to what the prediction of the simulation is, and then we can uh, change the next movement to get uh, all the time good quality of the products. And that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your uh, interest and uh, I'm curious about your question. Thank you.